In your prescribed fire planning and execution, you can employ several different prescribed fire burn patterns that will help manage smoke dispersal and influence the fire's behavior. This is done by igniting the fire with reference to the direction from which the wind is blowing. Backfires, into the wind. Head fires, burn with the wind. Flank fires, burning at right angles to the wind direction. And strip fires, which burn perpendicular to the wind direction. In today's video, we'll talk about the ring fire, a commonly used prescribed fire ignition pattern or sequence that utilizes each of these fire types. The ring fire is so named because it uses the back fire, flank fire, strip fire, and finally the head fire in sequence to surround the burn unit with a ring of fire. See figure 10.5 in the textbook for reference. A ring fire is not the only way to conduct a prescribed fire but it works well in many situations and contains all the elements of a safely conducted fire. This figure shows a typical ring fire sequence. Item number one, the fire is ignited at point one. Two igniters and crews proceed in opposite directions from this point, setting off a backfire. At point number two, when both fire crews are at the corners, they will proceed along the burn flank or lines labeled 2. The two crews will even move in parallel and unison fashion, walking into the wind, setting flank fires. As they burn these lines, the black or burned area, the area now devoid of fuel, will increase in size. Once both lines turn the corners onto edge 3, the fire will become a head fire as the flames move quickly with the wind towards the previously burned black areas. When the advancing flames of the head fire reach the already burned area, the fire will go out. We'll now look at each of these steps in more detail. In this photo, the fire is ignited on the downwind side of the burn unit on the edge of the fire break. Here, non-flammable green grass that also serves as the fire's anchor point. Pavement, a plowed field or water body would also serve as a fire break and anchor point. The flames will burn or back slowly into the wind in what is called a backfire. As you can see here, a backfire generally has low flame lengths that move slowly into the burn unit. This gives the burn crew time to observe the fire's behavior and take corrective action if necessary. For example, if the fire jumps out of the unit. The flame front is advancing slowly and at this point, the flames are burning along three edges of the unit. On the west flank, checkpoint number two in figure 10.5, the two burn crews are setting the perimeter fires. The crews are approaching checkpoint three on the side of the burn opposite the ignition point. There's a crew on foot with a pumper engine poised to respond if the fire jumps into the prairie to the south or west that we don't want to burn on this particular day. The head fire will not be lit yet. At the same time that the west flank burn crew is setting fire, the other crew is doing the same on the east flank. Squads are in radio contact and monitoring smoke dispersal, flame spread, and people wandering in and out of the unit. When each squad reaches the corner, they will pause until a burn boss gives the okay to start setting a head fire. Once the head fire is set, there is no turning back so the burn boss won't give this order until everything is in place. In other words, the respective crews are in position and ready to go with adequate water supplies in the pump units and backpack water sprayers. In this slide, you can see that the head fire is met up with the back end fire. The fire creates its own weather as the two advancing flame fronts create a strong updraft. Here in this slide, the two flanks have met in the middle. As the prairie grass fuel has been burned up, the fire goes out. There is a distinctive ash line left that you should be able to see. Now mop-up starts. All flame and smoke must be extinguished before the burn crew can leave the site. We then breathe a sigh of relief.